Hi guys, welcome to another Living SA TV video. David here. Today we are going to Victoria Yards, right? In CBD, I never been there, uh, and I needed someone to give me context of what it was, and I was really, really surprised. So we do, we actually did this in two different days uh, because we needed to catch everyone, right? So this came out very well. So I hope you guys enjoy this because this is probably one of the places in Joburg that uh, basically entrepreneurs make it happen and we got very successful artists in this vicinity. Don't you believe me? Stay tuned because once again this video will blow your mind. Okay guys, so today I'm at Victoria Yard, so I'm gonna show all of you guys this amazing place and tour this place because something is happening here, so I want to find what, because there is a place called Vail Valley, Maker's Valley, I mean. So I'm gonna meet with the people from the project and trying to understand what are they doing here. So let's check guys, stay tuned. Okay guys, so we are at Victoria Yards, like I mentioned, so the car park is full. This is the car park basically. You can wash your car also. I think it's 70, 70 bucks. Which is also cool. Uh, got a pizza place. Fish and chips. You guys come here to eat something which is quite cool. This is how it looks like. Not sure about the history of this place but I'm gonna find all out now. So it's fish and chip. You guys can see that fish and chips shop. So it looks like. Hi guys, how are you? Good, good. So you guys can see there's an amazing business running around here. A lot of stuff going on. It's gonna take you guys on a tour to this place. There's the body. Really nice. Urban flock. Wrapped. Neat. A lot of companies here. I'm gonna see all this now because I don't know if this probably was probably old warehouses that they converted. Like I mentioned, this place I think is called Maker's Valley also. So we're gonna meet now Ecta. Hector, how are you, man? Sorry, I'm already vlogging. What's up, guys? This is Hector, Makers Valley. Such a pleasure to meet you, bro. Good, good, man. So tell us what we're going to do today. Yeah, so today we're just going to explore the possibilities through social and creative enterprises and the amazing makers do beautiful spaces. And yeah, just connect. Smoke cup of cheese. <laughs> so Hector, tell us about this place. So what are we gonna get yeah, now? So right now we are at Folks Coffee Shop. Uh -huh. It's the most beautiful and the best craft coffee you can get. They make artisanal bread and beautiful cakes as you can see. Can yeah. see them, eh? I wasn't expecting to see this here at Victoria Yards, eh? <laughs> you guys have uh... Yeah, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Then there's also some art outside. You can buy some lemons and the stuff from the garden that comes from the garden. So you guys have your own uh, farm yeah, type so of thing. Because wow. it's like a semi-oven farm. Yeah. And all these things come from there. Wow. Yeah. This is really cool. Okay, guys. Today we're gonna learn more about this amazing place. You guys you can see it, coffee shop. You got a place to stand. You got some people around here. You know what I mean? Quite incredible. You got the the products. I don't want to speak too loud because I also don't want to disturb people. You know what I mean? I need. I, I need. I, uh, I need my cappuccino. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Got the breakfast. And of course the menu. Hi everybody, my name is Hatta, also known as Exclusified. I'm here to take you on a tour of Makers Valley inside Victoria Yards. So my name is Hatta, I'm a social and creative entrepreneur. I am a local of Makers Valley. I'm a passionate change maker and I'm out here doing beautiful things through change, through circular economy, through a well-being economy, 
through collaboration with institutions such as Victoria Yards. I run my own enterprise called Exclusified Media, but I also work for Makers Valley where we're pioneering you know, amazing, beautiful things through social and creative enterprises. Currently, Makers Valley is the heart of social and creative enterprise, and that's what we want to do, create a well-being economy through institutions like Victoria Yards where we're building inclusive communities in a circular economy. So right now we are at Victoria Yards, which is artists and artisan studios, where they sublet spaces where makers can make the beautiful products that they make. You know, we have people such as Blessing Gobeni, who's the visual artist of the year uh, for Standard Bank. We have Tepo the Gene Maker. We have Art of the Continent. We have so, so much more. Obviously, we have Makers Valley as well. So follow me. Perfect. You guys can see how many businesses were created uh, here at uh, Makers Valley. And this is also the map of this amazing place. And, and Nectar, when you started, you said that it was only eight businesses here. Yeah, yeah. And so now we have all that at the moment. Yeah. 45, so it's a self-sustainable community yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. So when wow. I got here, I came here just exploring what I was very passionate about. So the community here was cultivating the stuff that I love, from urban farming to just the creative spaces. And when I came, there were only eight tenants and I got to be involved and I was volunteering my time and learning and collaborating with different people. From there, Victoria Yards has grown to be this big, uh, beautiful development that's very inclusive and creating opportunities for the locals as I'm a local myself and I'm out here now doing things like tours and one of my highlights is giving Meghan Markle a tour. You know, that was such an honor. Yeah, crazy. Because the Duchess of Sussex, this space, I had the honor of spending over an hour with her. It was such a beautiful experience. So you definitely have to come through to make his valley, Victoria Yards and explore. Wow. <laughs> So a lot of people get the two mixed up. There's Makers Valley and then there's Victoria Yards. So Makers Valley is the area, it's the community, uh, inclusive of uh, Dorinfantine, Troyville, Bears Valley, Bertrams, Lawrenceville, and Judith Paul. Those communities make up what we call Makers Valley. And then Victoria Yards is a development in the community of Makers Valley and through collaboration we are building a circular and inclusive community. So now we are in the Art of the Continent. It's a beautiful space that in, uh, showcases African artifacts from all over the continent, from West Africa, as close as Limpopo here in South Africa. There's so much stuff and it's one of my favorite studios because not only do you, do you get to see the beauty of Africa, but you also get to get the history because they have books on some of the pieces. Uh, some of the pieces were only shown or displayed in royal houses. Uh, there's history on the beads, what they mean, and the significance for each tribe. And obviously, the people that work here are also some of my family that I work with. Shout out to Ali in the space there. What's up, Ali? How's it, man? How are you? Good, man. <laughs> So there you go, guys. So every uh, piece is basically a, collect, uh, collect, uh, a collector's piece of art that yeah. has their own history. Definitely. So people will not only buy a piece, but they buy something with a history, an yeah. entity. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's one thing I love about it. Well, I can it. How's it? How's it? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, now we are in the lower precinct of uh, Victoria Yards and this is actually where they started the development. Um, these buildings didn't have roofs. Uh, so just fun facts about Victoria Yards, it's 30,000 square meters, it's huge and it's basically right now a new development, artisan, artisan spaces as I mentioned, but before that it used to be a laundry firm. So they used to manufacture diapers, they used to wash the city's laundry, the hospital's laundry and so much more. Um, and right now they are, the, the lead developer is Brian Green, uh, who's also the developer of 44 stand if you know it from group 44 so you need to explore your city you need to know these places and get inspiration and get warm love and get to see how beautiful the plants are 
and do yourself in your community, guys. Yeah. I think also one thing I can share about the space is that um, Victoria also collaborates a lot with the artists here. So like this artichoke, it was made by Sarah Cronin and obviously it's very intrusive of the development that they also give an opportunity for other creatives and makers to add and beautify the space, you know? And then uh, a lot of people also ask themselves a question of the gardens, like why is there vegetables? So the community of Makers Valley is made up with so many makers, right? And Brand Green intentionally wanted to have vegetables here so that he can shift people's minds and you know, make them think about nutrition and food security because that's one of the challenges the community faces. So now we are pioneering Edible Streets, which is a beautiful idea by the urban farmer Siabong and Klang Amanda, who now we are planting vegetables along the pavements. If you visit Victoria Yard, you'll definitely see it. Wow. Hi guys, now we are visiting Dario Manjate, who is a collage artist who works with magazines. So he basically creates collage pieces from magazines that you throw away, and then he's turning all that waste into treasure. Watch this. Wow. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Look at this. Wait until you meet the artist behind these amazing pieces, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've if you, if you got time, say, please, please, come to the camera. No, this is beautiful. <laughs> Dario, what's up, man? How are you? Good, 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 good. I'm okay. good. Sure. So tell us about your amazing work, man. Um, it's called, actually, a collage. Uh, it just to do for recycling, like, old magazines, you know. So it's part of, you know, cleaning the environment as well. So yeah, that's the little contribution that I do to make sure that we live in a safe and clean area, you know? So where you draw your inspiration? Because I can see this is you doing amazing work here. <laughs> well, I get my inspiration from beauty. Anything that is beautiful inspires me. Nice music, you know, and all that. <laughs> so uh, tell those people that you work with already. Uh, come again? Uh, uh, people that you work with. At the moment, mm -hmm. um, I would say basically I work alone, but I've got a couple of galleries like in the Netherlands, United States, and around here in South Africa and Germany as well. Wow. Yeah, so those are the galleries that internationally do represent my my work. Yeah. That's amazing. So how you feel about uh, taking your work internationally as a South African artist? It's good. It's really good because we have to represent, you know, our our country like South Africa out there, you know, just to make a small spot, not only that will be known by the Table Mountain and the great, the Big Five, but also in terms of art, you know, we can make the world know that, look, there, there is always an alternative way of doing art without using paint, you know, so this is another yeah. way of doing art without it having to use paint. It impacts a lot the environment as well. No, you definitely have amazing work here, eh? <laughs> Thank you. No, this is, now I know why you went international, eh? Sure. <laughs> eh? Wow, look at this, man. <laughs> no, this is really amazing. Okay, Darius, so tell us uh, how much is a piece of uh, your, uh, your art? For example, that one day, how much it costs? It costs only 45,000 rand. 45,000 rand. Yes. But tell us why it costs 45,000 rand and uh, let us understand the work behind your creations. Okay, cool. So, first of all, it's something that's contemporary, it is unique. And I would say that I don't know if there are some other artists who do exactly the very same kind of technique, you know. And it's something that you can use as an investment, you know. As I grow, you know, with my clientele, I always tell them that I want to put my, put my price to be a little bit healthy. Because as I grow, I grow with them. Price is going to change as I grow as well, you know. And it's something unique that once you hang it in, the, in, in your house, then you'll never regret Mm. Something really beautiful. And for example, tell us how much it take it takes you to do a beautiful uh, frame like this, beautiful picture like this. Um, it takes normally depending on the complexity of the image itself. You know, there are some images that are not so complicated. You know, um, it takes something like six weeks, one and a half <laughs> month to two months to complete wow. one. Because I need to make sure that I get because I don't use paint, so everything that you see there is actually paper cutouts. 
it's entirely paper cut out. So it takes time, you know, to build up, you know, because sometimes you put, you, you stick something in and if you're not happy, then I, I, I just change it and, and, and stick it, you know, with a different color tone and stuff like that. Well, and go. Cool. So there's this piece that have been commissioned by the Green Movement in the Netherlands. So they want this piece to be entirely done out of pieces, you know, of the green, like cleaning the environment, you know, because that's going to be like an awareness for the campaign that they'll be having in the Netherlands. So this piece is going to be entirely covered by images that have to do with sustainability. Amazing. No, yeah, Look, guys, guys, this is just amazing because <laughs> literally everywhere you go, you got a little farm, you guys. It's just amazing. Wow. Look at this. No, I love, I love, I love what Victoria Yard is doing for the community. Eh? Wow, I hope. I actually wish that there, there were more places like this in Joburg, eh? Now I understand what makes this place so damn unique. Okay, Hector, tell us about it. Yeah, so now we are at Storm Ceramics. This is basically, that shows you what Maker's Valley is. It's one of the studios where they make ceramics, beautiful, beautiful pottery. You get to see the whole experience and it's so soothing and therapeutic just to watch it. And yeah, just take a, take a look, take a look. So this is where they make, you know, Maker's Valley offers a working space. So all these uh, potteries, all these uh, ceramicists, this is where they make what they do. And then they sell at other places. But obviously on the first Sunday market, they do sometimes sell from here, but they don't only sell here. They supply other shops, uh, such as 44 Stanley and online. Perfect. You guys see what I mean? Look at this beautiful place. Amazing people, Cosmos, what's up, man? Introduce yourself to my audience. Tell us about it. Okay, so my name is Cosmos Dogway, and I'm actually working on the wheel. I'm actually making some beans for some sugar pots. So that's the replica of what I'm doing. So... Oh, this, this takes some serious... Yes. Yeah. How long, for how long have you been doing this? Uh, it's been some time now. But look at that, it's, it's like it's been done by a machine. That's your, your level is just amazing. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So I actually separate the whole piece from the, from the paint by actually cutting it out. And if you leave it out, then it gets stuck. Wow. It destroys the whole thing. Now we're going to see PJ, who is the manager of Victoria Yards. He's going to tell us more about how many tenants are here and the process and how they fit in the community from a manager and the Victoria Yards perspective. And I'm still going to show you some more cool stuff. Wow. Yeah. Because you do blow your mind, guys. <laughs> How's it? Yeah, this is a sculpture I wanted to tell you about. Ooh, um, tell me, tell me. So this sculpture is a bow bamp um, installation. Uh -huh. uh, it was built by Franz um Duduzi Matebula and it was actually commissioned by Sonal Glass. Sonal Glass is one of the tenants. They make solar panel lights. So they are based here and they do beautiful things. So the sculpture is built from uh, recyclable metals. And inside it's supposed to be, you know, uh, a shell. So they're still gonna do something inside, something like a library where the kids can come and read books. And it actually has a, a platform on top which you can get and see the whole Victoria Yards, which you, I think let's go. You up. can literally call it a tree house, eh? Yeah, yeah. A library tree house, eh? Yeah. Let's have a look, man. Whoa, guys, this place is so amazing. You guys need to come here with proper, in a proper tour to, to be amazed. Look at that place. Yo, let's, yo, this is really cool. Okay, wait, wait, wait. My first tree house, eh? <laughs> I'm the king of the fort. Yeah. Oh, so you see what you mean? They got solar yeah, panels here. Solar panel lights. So this is also just educating people about the energy of nature. You know, like everything nature gives to us. So this is just a, a, a display of how beautiful it is and how nature is always giving. And we need to, as human beings, 
you know reciprocate that energy of nurturing nature and taking care of it and yeah so they, they we teach the people that come here uh, about solar panel lights and it's just just showing them the, the display so another fun fact about Victoria Yards is that it's it, its goal is to go completely off grid so they have solar panel lights I mean solar panels so when load shedding hits because it's South Africa and ESCOM ish you know so we don't really get affected because there's uh, solar power you know so and then also the water that waters the gardens is from a borehole so everything is just sustainable within Victoria Yards and another beautiful uh, model or the business model is obviously let subletting the spaces but another beautiful thing is that it's also an event space so if you want to have a wedding if you want to have a party you can come to Victoria Yards and use the event spaces the warehouse and the garden over here sure really amazing yeah yeah Hi guys, so this is PJ, he will tell us amazing facts about uh, Victoria Yards. Um, one of the most important factors about Victoria Yards is just simply the fact that it exists is almost like a small economic business miracle if you want to call it that because it, what it originally was was a bunch of laundries built in the 30s and 40s and uh, it then fell into disrepair with modernization of laundries and things like that and it eventually ended up being a whole lot of trash vehicle places, garages, panel beating, body shop kind of thing, very unregulated. And uh, in 2016 we basically started working on, so you'll be able to see all the before and after photos to, from what it was then. But one of the things that we really are excited about is the international recognition that Victoria Arts gets. So not just in the local press um, are we you know, shown to be a, a catalyst for change um, because of the type of people that come here, but we're also um, recognized officially in, in, in the international sphere of properties through the Urban Land uh, Institute uh, award that we received in 2000 and to, uh, sorry 2021 and um, that really gave us a boost and, and really put Victoria Yards' name out there on the international platform. Um, the Urban Land Institute uh, basically looks at different project we're looking at different projects, brownfield projects as they call them, throughout the world and Victoria Yards which is 23 uh, 23,000 square meters basically went up against massive corporate company, you know, massive corporates like hotels and um, uh, new developments in Amsterdam and the UK, things like that. And we were, we're actually a joint winner. I can't remember who the other winner was because it's more important to remember with the arts. But we were very honored and humbled by it. Um, a lot of work went into it. Brian Green is actually the lead developer behind Victoria Yards. He owns another property called 44 Stanley, which was very much like this, that I started with him back in 2003. And uh, that has become more retail aspect and was always the plan, whereas this is more an artisanal center and will never be massive retail. And on the international level, we also have people like, uh, you know, artists that we have. Dario Manjate is a very well-known international artist that he uses uh, magazine images torn up to specification. It's a whole process. Uh, and he has some works hanging in, in, in museums, I mean, to art galleries throughout the world and private clients that he has. Uh, Blessing Ngobeni is also a very well-known artist that's represented. He has a beautiful studio here and he's represented by the Everard Reed Gallery, which is known internationally as well. So there's a number of people making the, the names for themselves out of Victoria Yards. Um, one of the one of the other aspects of Victoria Yards, and I think that this is really, really important, and Brian Green, who I mentioned earlier, is very passionate about that and that is that the people around Victoria Yards are not displaced by the gentrification that may happen and we haven't let that happen we haven't done any other um, work on properties around us that could displace people and uh, the, the ability for the community to come in and get help from us is understated you know we can't overstate the importance of that because they can come in uh, if people's, if people like during COVID, people were not being, being, being were not being fed. A food program was started by a um, non-profit organisation in, in in Johannesburg, and it's now grown into the People's Pantry, which is this wonderful uh, place where families who are destitute can be registered and be given food on a on a occurring, reoccurring basis. Uh, we have the Makers Valley, which deals with the entrepreneurial spirit of the community, so young people can come in, 
use the internet, get business ideas, get uh, coached in business, um, all kinds of things. They've got a multimedia studio where they can do podcasts and things. And this is all sponsored by American Spaces, uh, which works with Makers Valley. They have an extremely dynamic CEO, Tobile Chittenden, who you should perhaps chat to. Um, and uh, we have a little school here called, called uh, Timbuktu in the Valley, which caters for the children that are not able to go to traditional school or might be too young. So we basically take the, the community is called Timbuktu in the Valley, run by a lovely uh, German lady. And she's helped by the South African, uh, South African a bunch of volunteers and teachers. And they basically take children in from the community and further afield uh, on a daily basis to to help them with their studies. And it doesn't cost them anything at the moment. Okay, perfect. And for example, if I want to open here a studio, what do I need to... Uh, how, how can I become eligible for you guys to accept me, for example? <laughs> well, basically, we, we're not a high footfall center. So we're not a, a shopping center per se that has got a big anchor tenant like a big supermarket. So there's no need for anyone to come here every single day. So we always ask, remind prospective tenants that want to come here to say, look, if your business relies on foot traffic, this is not the place for you. If you are a creator, if you are passionate about what you do, like we have ceramicists, we have sculptures, we have artists, fine artists, we have uh, graphic artists, we have people that are doing simple things like, you know, printing t-shirts, but they're providing a service to the community because they get a lot of people coming in here to have designs printed. We have back of house, if you want to say, CMT, cut, make and trim operations. People are doing big jobs for, for like airlines or what have you. But then we also have smaller, more artisanal things, you know. So we would say to you, number one, not a lot of foot traffic. So if your business relies on that, no. Number two, are you creating something? It doesn't have to be unique, but it's something coming from you that your business is creating, not just simply importing and selling on. Anyone can do that. And uh, also just to be part of the community, you know, wanting to be a part of the, of the Victoria Yards community, but also in, be inclusive of the community around us. Beautiful. Thank you. How many people are actually employed here? So basically, I mean, we've, we have about 54 tenants that are here on a, on a full-time basis. Um, and in amongst all of them, they're probably on average, I would say there's probably about 100, 110 people here every day, maybe a few more. I mean, some of them employ more, some less, depending on their size. So it's a nice little vibrant community. Uh, I doubt it's here. Uh, no worries, no worries. Isn't this place beautiful, guys? Such an amazing way of rehabilitating a place like this, eh? Hello, welcome to our show HUM. Um, it's a collaboration from uh, Tema Tambo and Cosman Goru and me, Dunya Herzog, and we did for this show here at Victoria Yard's Beehives out of play, you know, and together with a sound installation that was made by these instruments and then com composed by different artists around, uh, you know, West Africa, Cameroon, Nigeria, and South Africa, as well as the Congo. Um, and this sculpture you see, that will after the show be will be hives in gardens of people and create these wax and honey. So, guys, this is where we're going now. Wow, guys, look at this! This is so beautiful, guys. So unique. You guys find this stuff here in Victoria Arts. Look at this. Use these beautiful drawers as, for example, notebook cover, something like that. Look at the beautiful paintings. 
Now, guys, come on. You don't, you don't, you don't see this type of stuff here in Joburg, eh? That's why it makes Victoria Yard so unique. Look at these beautiful pieces, unique pieces. I'm mesmerized by this. Okay, this is a grater that you can create almost anything. So with this one, after you peel your garlic, let me quickly peel it. Okay, take your garlic, after you peel it, just wrap it on the plate. Circular motion, up and down, it doesn't matter which way you go. You get the same results, take it to the last bit. And with this, it doesn't hurt your fingers or your knuckles. Take a brush, we collect whatever you've grated. Then you have nice, fresh garlic paste. They clean very easy. Just rinse under the tape water. The dishwasher safe as well. So these are the paste that you can break almost anything. This is so unique. It's such a, a nice, uh, simple idea, you yeah. know. So, you know what, what I love about the space, David, is that they make anything here. Yeah. So everything is done actually in-house. Yeah. So everything we make it here from clay. After that, we fire them with these ovens. Uh huh. Yes, and they are handmade and hand painted. They are the artists. There. Wow. Doing the work. Yes. And introduce yourself, man. Yes, my name is Kepi from Ceramic Studio. This is what we make our ceramic crater plates, and all the ceramic stuff is made here in Victoria Arts. And how many people are you employing? Uh, we a team of six guys. That's amazing! Six wow! Six making all the stuff from scratch. This, this is the clay that we use to make all these greater plates, ceramic stuff. They're all handmade and hand painted in here. And these are the ovens uh -huh. that we use to fire these. Look at that! That is so nice. So you guys literally look at this beautiful vase, you know? Yeah, this is so nice. Guys, only in Victoria Yards. That's why I'm telling you, you guys need to see this place, meet the people, meet the artists, products made in Joburg. Look at this. Everything is handmade. African culture right here, guys. Look at this amazing. Look at this. Everything then in-house. Look at this. This is marvelous. Eh? So this is basically what they were using. The gentleman was showing us to uh, basically uh, smash, crush the garlic. And this is so easy, eh? E, you guys do an amazing job, eh? Look at this. Eh? Look at the detail of the paintings. If you guys watching this overseas, check the, the description of the video. Because I'll leave all the details below. So you guys can enter in contact in order with Ceramic Studio to get your amazing African pieces. Unique pieces. And art. Hi guys, my name is Nati. Uh, my surname is Ngubo. Uh, welcome to the house of Zah. Feel free, feel at home. This is the house where the soul of peace lives in. So what we make, we make this beautiful blanket. Uh, most people think it's Sutu, but then yeah, it's something similar to the Sutu. But this one is our own unique. South African made brand. We manufacture these from scratch. We also make them here in this house. Hence, you can see each and every blanket you see here has a story behind. It's not just a blanket that you see. This one is was an inspiration from the Bavenda culture. We call this one Musadzi. Why is it called Musadzi? These circles you see here represent a woman in the Bavenda culture. The colors, the pattern, these are the colors and the pattern they use in their culture. But then, hey, I'm the swaggy guy. <laughs> I put it in style. But this side, I have this side. This, 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 this one is the kitchen. This is where everything is made. This is where everything is being done. We make things possible in this house. We sleep here. We live here. This is our house. We connect with it. We just one soul. Everything, Jim, we just that kind of guy. So, we've been in business for a very, very long time, but we reside in, in, in Victoria Yards for like we came here, is now it's three months, we have three months, but we've been in a business for a long, long time. But now, this is when now our business is coming up, now it's popping up, we out there, people want the stuff, everything, Jim. Uh, so 
Zal came from the name Pumzile. Pumzile is our sister, and you can see the picture there at the back. That's her. Pumzile Duli. So Zal came from her name, of which they substituted the other alphabet and they left Zal alone because it was supposed to be Zile, but then they substituted the I with the Y so that it's Zai. So I'm a Zai boy. <laughs> and how many people are you uh, employing at the moment? Uh, right now, uh, we're currently looking for people uh, who can work in the fair tree. Uh, we're still searching for them. Uh, we are hiring. Yeah, so I think four people would be good. Yeah, I just need four people then. I'm good. Amazing, amazing. So one of the highlights in Victoria Yards is Tepo, the jean maker. This is one of the biggest brands in South Africa. And let's go explore and see what they do. So this is one of my favorite brands and I've seen the growth since I've been involved in Victoria Yards and we're going to meet the amazing team behind the work that they do. So Tepo means hope in Sutu Twana and it's really, really just amazing on showcasing African makers, especially in the fashion industry and just breaking boundaries and having pride with our name and having our own African names in our clothing, you know. So we've got Zinzi. Hi guys, my name is Zinzi Jim and I am the brand manager of Tipper Jeans. Welcome to our store. Um, this is predominantly our atelier and our studio and this is where we work from. Um, the store is in Hyde Park corner um, and I think I'll give it to you to, to also introduce himself. Hello, I'm Mattel Moing. I work here as a runner and just creative, overall creative assistant. So just as Zinzi said, we have our flagship store in Hyde Park, which opened in 2019. And then our store here in Victoria Yards first, first opened in 2017. Before that, we've been, but has been operating since 2015. And I think the beautiful thing about our tap is it, it breaks boundaries. It goes beyond just for fashion and what you are. It actually goes into being a part of your story and being a part of who you are. Can go back to when Meghan Markle actually came to the country and she found her way to Victoria Yards and just by God's grace she found herself in front of our store and exactly what I thought, the same steps that she just walked through right now is the same steps that, uh, that she walked through and she didn't leave without anything, she got a, a thank you for little Charlie as well and for, out, for the rest of their lives, maybe they, know, they may not remember coming here specifically but we'll all be part of their story and that's what we're about we want to be a part of the story and we want to make sure that your story comes in line with our story and we can just be a part of it together. Beautiful. Okay, sh guys, show us the, the everything because I can see you guys have a beautiful place here. Okay, so here what we can show you is that recently we were awarded two awards uh, by Paton Brands. Paton Brands is an Yoba, which is basically the youth, youth awards. Youth, I mean, top Youth Awards brands, top 16 brands, youth brands in South Africa, and we won top apparel brand, which is a really great achievement for us, achievement for us and our team. And then we also won this overall brand um, in the country right now. And I think this is something that we are very proud about. And I think it also just shows us that we are going in the right direction and people are inspired. And it, it, it also just becomes a great part of our story to show that you can have an idea and you can start something and you can produce this and it can definitely be something that can be um, food to the table to the many people that we're supporting by having this this business um, and also here we've got some of our garments and our jeans obviously predominantly we do make jeans but we also make other stuff we've got golf shirts which are very cool and these have our crown um, and we've got here the Tepor um, Horizon T-shirt, which is also one of our best sellers. And this is Pride. the Pride T-shirt. Um, we think as a as a brand, we really want to champion inclusion and just highlighting that everybody is like accepted and like every brand should have an element of that. And I mean, obviously, you don't want to do it in a gimmicky way. So we've really, really tried to make it as part of our identity as the brand. Um, following up the Tepo flag, this is our flag, a flag t-shirt. Um, and yeah, there's like, Mateo, do you want to share more on the jeans? 
on the same So when you're looking at so the space that you're looking at right now on the back before expanding the jeans is actually our our atelier. So everything, all of the garments and internal denim that you see in front of you right now come out of the back. Our team at the moment is at lunch. It's predominantly just ladies, and the ladies who work in the back here. Yeah, so I was always wanted to instill a thing of having them be able to work close from home. He always had to as a kid. Um, his mother would only come home at 10 in the evening and she would leave me out at 4, the, 4 o'clock and she understands that, what that can be and the impact that it has on the kids. So all the ladies that work here actually live within 5 minutes walking distance of Victoria Yard so that they can also have that time with their kids, be they have that time with their families and it's just, just not a name in the house but it's actually a face and a figure. Um, with that, with our jeans, so these right here are actually our ladies' jeans. And everything, and we just recently re um, released them to our, our collection. And going back to what I mentioned about our storytelling, we always leave little details within our dinner to, to be expressive of who you are as one or what we represent. So here in our ladies' jeans, we have Mbokado. And then on the inside as well, we tell the story of, our, of the actual denim and, who, and how it came to, came to be within the denim. So it's crafted and to make, to make you understand that you're not just wearing because you can better get a piece of clothing anywhere in the world and it may not mean anything towards you, but right, what we want you to do is to be a part of it as well. So you understand why we do this, why you want to wear this and what goes into it. Beautiful guys. This is so amazing what you guys are seeing at the moment. Eh? You can make it yourself, you can make your brand, you can make your own, not only a, a clothing brand, but also a movement by understanding yes. what we have around here. Definitely. And I mean, look, I think for us as a brand, I think our aim is to grow, yes, in South Africa, grow in Africa, but more sure that South African or African brands can have products that are high quality, high value, luxury products that can be taken anywhere from here to the world. And our, what we are planning on is obviously expanding to the rest of the world and taking Tepo jeans where anyone anywhere from the world has a pair of Tepo jeans or if you land in Africa and you want the best product, we are part of that conversation and we are known for that. So I think in the future, this business will represent hope and growth for the economy and literally to highlight the diversity of our story and who we are as black people. Probably South African guys. Thank you very much. Of course, thank you. Thank you for coming thank to our store. Thank you for having us to be a part of your, your story as well. You yeah, yeah. Do we walk there? So, in Victoria Yards, there's a lot of interest, not only from creatives and older people like myself, but there are also young people who are very interested in the development and what is happening. And Timbuktu in the Valley is one of the highlights. It's a learning center for kids. Hello. 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 Learning center for kids. They come through and they get to engage in all the amazing stuff that's happening in Victoria Yards. Timbuktu in the Valley. Org. Za. Check them out and connect and help them if you can. Thank you. Guys, this is such an amazing place. So, Hector, tell us about it. We are finally at the heart of the creative and social enterprises, the Makers Valley Studios. This is where my passion and my fire burns, you know, to make a change in the community, to be inclusive, to build and collaborate with developments such as Victoria Yards and tackle issues such as gentrification, you know, so there's a, a, a term or concept we're exploring alongside Victoria Yards, which is gentrification without displacement whereby the locals get empowered, they made a priority in the opportunities that happen, and one of those things is access to internet, access to resources, access to safe space within the, the, the development of Victoria Yards, and hence we have this studio where people get taught on computer literacy, they get workshops on their polishing their CVs to get jobs. There's always workshops that happen for them to get a skill and come through. Let's check out what happens inside. You can see we are obviously in collaboration with American Spaces, um, which supports and funds most of our programs. On a day-to-day -day basis, this is what you find, young people, running their own enterprises, getting access to Wi-Fi, 
and we've got a library of books there. You know, also they were donated as African authors, and we have a range of computers and young people wanting to learn and engage with everything. You know, it's impressive. Oh, eh? This is Carlo. This Carlo is an amazing musician. Check out on the digital stores. Her EP is Love Over Everything. She's one of my favorite musicians. She's a local, and she's doing great, 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 great. Carlo. What else do you want to tell the people? I'm a singer-songwriter from Johannesburg. You can download my EP titled Love Over Everything on all major music platforms. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a lot of kids come here to learn uh, about computers, literacy, you know, just to engage and break down um, the barriers of accessibility, you know, because a lot of them don't have phones, they don't have internet, but through Makers Valley, they get to access these resources and these computers on a daily basis for free. Wow, this is, look at this amazing patio, guys. So, bro, tell us what we have here, eh? So, this is one of the oasis, you know, of Victoria Yards. When you're inside, you have one of the biggest uh, plantation, because um, urban farming is a big thing in Victoria Yards. And then we have James Delaney Studio. He did the project at the Wilds. We have the art and ceramic guys there. We have Boxer of Possibilities, where it's an eco building built out of recycled material. So it's Lego bricks. They didn't use any water or cement. They just made it out of recycled materials using resin and some sand. And then they just made Lego bricks that connect together. So you can also check them out. It's um, called Box of Possibilities. And then we have so many amazing things. We've got Haneli Kutia, who does uh, sculptures, murals, uh, different types of art from recycled material. So she gets like the steel from old mines. And then this is some of the wood from, the, from, from, from places that are very ecological. And then she repurposes it into art, you know. So her whole studio is just filled with other things. Unfortunately, she's not here today because she's making an installation somewhere. Uh, but if you can, check out Hanela Kutsia. Come through, come through. Let's check out some more beautiful things. And so we're here now to check out the custom furniture by Shedrek Mukiba, one of my favorite tenants. Come through and check it out. So, uh, well, uh, I'm Shedrek Mukiba. I'm um, doing the furniture. And then like this was the table. So I'm converting as a, a cabinet for the, for the school. I do the chairs, I do the tables, any, any woodworking. And you and supply so, Victoria uh, Yards yeah, with your amazing yeah, carpentry. Yeah. Yes. So he repurposes it and he takes like old wood and then he gives it new life. Like, and he also like transferring the skills to a younger generation because he always allows uh, young people who are interested in woodwork to kind of shadow him and learn from the experience he has all these years of doing furniture and he's here now sharing and doing all the custom pieces for Victoria Yard. So any bench you see in Victoria Yard, also in the deco, in the offices, it's him who made it. Shout out. So if yeah. you need it, the contact details are there. If you need furniture, you reach out to Puchetrek and he'll sort you out. Yeah guys, so this is the center courtyard where uh, Vic Yards also hosts the beautiful First Sunday Market. Uh, the, one of the business models is not just renting out studio space, but also Victoria Yards is a beautiful event venue, as you can see. You know, you can host your wedding here, your festival, your fashion show, anything you desire. Uh, Victoria Yards is a blank canvas for you to paint on, bring your beautiful energy, your beautiful people, and yeah, let's vibe. So one of the oldest tenants as well is Karibu Outdoor Gear. They take uh, recycled fabrics and repurpose them and make these amazing bags. Some of them are actually like waterproof and they employ local ladies. They teach them these sewing skills. They get to learn how to make with their hands. That's obviously tackling unemployment because now they're teaching a skill, giving them uh, the opportunity to work and create beautiful stuff. As you can see, some of these bags, some of the prints. Uh, this is a shred. 
uh, branding. So there's a lot of collaboration that happens. There's some people that specialize in making patterns, but they are, this fabric specifically is called a shwe shwe. So you have to know what patterns they are. It's called a shwe shwe, hence you see the shwe tag on it. But yeah, come through to Victoria Yards, come and feel it, come and see the quality. Thank you. So Hector, tell us what's going on here, brother. Yeah, yeah, we are in the Victoria Yards parking lot. Some of you guys see a parking lot. Somebody saw an opportunity. So we have the young man, Cyril and Sandile, who run a young business, a waterless car wash. Take it away, Cyril. Hey, how are you guys? My name is Cyril, co-founder of Quicken Wash. Yeah, we saw an opportunity here to start a car wash. So if you want to get your car clean and shining, you can come here to Quicken Car Wash. The best, the best, the best. Sandile. Sandile is my name. It's waterless car wash. So you might be wondering, how is it waterless? Instead of water, we're using a lubricant solution, which you spray in the car, it encapsulates the dirt, and then we wipe it off with microfiber towels. The car stays shining and perfect. As you see, it's quick in, waterless car wash. Peace. Don't forget, guys, to come here to clean your cars because the cars will be yeah, yeah. looking amazing. So a beautiful thing to note is that there are locals in the area of Makers Valley, and they saw this opportunity, and it's just like, I feel like Victoria is a, a mine of opportunities. You just have to be thinking right. Obviously, think around the circular economy, the well-being of the planet and the people. So they don't use any chemicals, and they don't use too much water. They just use their solutions, and they're making a beautiful impact. Come and get your car washed. Quick in. Car wash. Quick in. Car wash. We're now at So Bay Frozen. The most delicious frozen sorbets, your desserts, they buy surplus fruits from street vendors in the CBD of Jersey and they take that and transform it into what you will never imagine, the flavors, the taste, come through. Hi guys, my name is Tula Nema and I'm one of the co-founders of Sobe and that's my partner Mungeni and we started our company in 2017 so here's our flavors i'll let you know what we have for today so over here some of the flavors are not labeled so we have a uh, honeydew with vanilla and that's nachi granadilla and that's pulp and pineapple we have a sour apple and i actually give you guys a taste this is a pumpkin chai spice it has a hint of amarula no, there you go Mm. What it tastes like, bro? Mm. <laughs> Did they give you a taste, hey? Let's give it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's wait. wait, let's have it. Mm. Okay. Guys, this is nice, eh? <laughs> you must come here for a taste and buy, you know? So, what's nice about our sorbets, we use ripe fruits. So that means less sugar in the process making. And our aim is to reduce food wastage yeah. in the inner city. And it's vegan so, friendly. Yeah. It's vegan friendly, guys. We work with street vendors and yeah. That's this us. this look tastes amazing, eh? Yeah. yeah. Well done, guys. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And there you go, guys. Morning entrepreneurship here at um, at Victoria Yards. I'm so amazed about this place. I hope you guys also like it. Uh, but let's move on in the video. So obviously this video is long, you might see it and get hungry or want to come here to Victoria Yards and like, yo, is the food? Yes, there's a coffee shop, there's uh, Four Dots, they sell pizza, there's Bond Society, which is a bar, but better yet, one of my favorite highlights is the fish and chips shop, the best in Johannesburg, the best in South Africa. So if the magic happens here. They sell for the people outside, they sell for the people inside. So grab your bite, order the best fish and chips. We're about to eat right now. Me and David, uh, once you have lunch, peace out. So that is the journey of Makers Valley and some few highlights of what happens within Victoria Yards. In my boy, I am Exquisified. Exquisified means something that's authentically dope. And definitely this channel is Exquisified. Hit that like button, subscribe, do all the beautiful things. This was the first episode and I hope to see you again on the next one and the next one and the next one. Or better yet, come here to Victoria Yards. Come here to Makers Valley, enjoy some sobre, go buy some separate jeans, get Exquisified. <laughs>